Good morning, everybody, and it is Adrian, or also known as obviously Asian Weather Forecast, and this is going to be another tropical update on the North Atlantic, as we have quite a bit of updates here, and obviously a lot to talk about, as a lot has changed compared to my latest video. So obviously, we still have tropics from Grace nearing ports into Puerto Rico. We do have a new area of track here. Uh, there's been a lot of confusion with the actual low-level low circulation. We can go into it more in depth later today in the actual video itself, as well, Fred. It is no longer a post-tropical system and it has reformed in the Gulf of Mexico. And that's what we have in best 96L as well in an area of interest here just north of the Bermuda Island and a few hundred miles off the U.S. coast. So it's obviously as well something to keep an eye on as we have a new area of interest as the tropics are still already quite active at the moment. So overall, August looks to be very interesting. And will continue to be very interesting but we have a lot of updates here on fred and grace so if you are in the caribbean or even in the gulf of mexico coast i recommend you guys watch this video as i'm going to be going over the area uh, where we can see the tracks for both systems overall strength and as well overall what the new models and overall just what we have so far information wise but before we get in the video i recommend you guys subscribe to the channel smash that like button and as well be sure to hit the bell icon notification you guys can notify as soon as I post another tropical update. But with that further ado, let's get into the forecast. So here's a look at the actual uh, five-day tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, we actually they have not updated the remnants of Fred. However, they actually did tweet, and you can see if remnants of Fred redevelops uh, in the tro uh, in a, in a um, tropical storm, basically, or into a tropical storm, basically. So this thing's back up to a tropical storm at the moment here, and it has not at the moment. Uh, popped up on the actual website itself here. Uh, maybe we can check the public advisory here, but overall, tropical storm watch is in effect here for Alabama and Florida border there, as obviously this thing has reformed into a tropical storm. So basically, we're looking at conditions possible within the watch area, generally within 24 hours or so. Uh, but uh, a tropical storm a warning will be likely uh, be required for portions of the tropical storm watch area later this at morning. And I think if any of those tropical storm warnings will be notified or I guess issued only for the Florida Panhandle. So uh, let's actually go back here, uh, back to the actual website itself. But there you see, obviously, this now redevelops into a tropical storm. So we actually do have tropical storm Fred again. So it's most likely, yeah, there it is, 40 miles an hour, uh, 1,009 millibars, and as well moving north, northwest at only 8 miles an hour. So I think this thing could definitely have some potential here with Fred. Uh, obviously, this thing has. Uh, it obviously has decent conditions, how there is still a little bit dry air towards the west of the actual low pressure, so that's why we're kind of seeing this being more lopsided. However, the trough is moving northward, so I think Fred could definitely get its act together as it moves towards the north here, so I would not definitely get a decent travel storm for landfall, which is why warnings are likely to be issued. So, high chance, obviously, but this is just going to have to wait for the next update for it to actually pop up here. But let's actually get to the discussion itself here. Uh, so let's actually see what they have peak wise and they still have a 50 mile an hour peak so initial forecast obviously 40 miles an hour they finally have it back to a tropical storm and then you can see now uh going to be basically inland within 60 hours or so and be 35 miles an hour and 60 hours and then weakening 25 miles an hour and uh 72 hours or so so obviously right now let's see here today through monday uh heavy rainfall could lead to uh, urban and small stream flooding impacts and cause new and renewed river flooding across southern Florida, the Big Bend, and Panhandle. So since this is kind of very lopsided, a lot of that initiation and actually convection and overall storms are east of the low pressure, and east of the low pressure is obviously Florida. So we're going to start seeing some more storms towards uh, the uh, uh, St. Petersburg area, of uh, Tampa Bay. And that's going to continue throughout. As it goes north, it's going to bring more rain, typically for areas in, in the Panhandle um, so from Monday onward, heavy rain and flood impacts could extend into other portions of the southeast and into southern and central Appalachian and Piedmont as Fred interacts with the front and the area. Fred's forecast to regenerate as a tropical cyclone over the Gulf of Mexico later today and bring a risk of tropical storm conditions to portions of the northern Gulf Coast, especially from coastal Mississippi there to the Florida Panhandle beginning Monday night. A tropical storm warning will be likely required for the portions of this area later this morning. So Let's keep an eye on the potential for a tropical storm warning soon. Let's look at Grace here. So Grace is 40 miles an hour, 1,010 millibars. So Fred actually has a little pressure. Then Grace, Grace as well has been relocated further northward. 
And actually, I'm not shocked about that it does that it was found more northward because the low circulation was actually popping up in a convection burst in the north near Guadalupe at the time, and the National Center kept the low low circulation further southward, and now it's back to the north. So we actually have a new cone and all that. So actually, really watching out for a portion of uh, this actually skin Cuba coast and then possibly become a significant threat across the Gulf of Mexico. But moving not only west northwest at 16 miles an hour, which is actually 10 miles an hour slower than what it was moving uh, earlier yesterday here. So that's going to be a big factor to uh, either it hurting it or actually helping develop. Because obviously, if it does move pretty slow over the uh, the obviously Espanola Mountains, it's going to really have more effects than if it were moving faster. However, if it continues to kind of go northward and it kind of only skins Espanola. Uh, kind of what H4 was, and it's moving slow. We can definitely have a pretty significant storm. But either way, this thing will most will most likely end up in the Gulf of Mexico and bring it, uh, and obviously get to its peak there because just how the condition will be a lot more conducive there with a lot less inter land interaction. At this point, it should be moving a lot slower over the Gulf of Mexico. But let's get a look here at the actual advisory. So let's actually look at grades here in the actual discussion. So we can actually get a look at what the actual peak they are looking for. So peak is still actually 50 miles an hour and actually they have a peak of 50 actually within 24 hours so we actually may get up to 50 uh as it nears the Hispaniola region and that's going to be inland for Hispaniola for 40 miles an hour it's obviously not going to be a uh, good whatsoever uh because obviously it's going to bring in some really heavy rain and flash flooding across leeward island to virgin islands haiti and dominican republic and we all remember and we all know that Haiti did get hit by a 7.2 magnitude earthquake earlier yesterday morning. And there is significant damage, and the death toll is significantly rising, and obviously there's a lot of structural and infrastructure damage. And obviously, I believe that's that's stronger than the 2010 earthquake in Haiti. I believe the 2010 was 7.0, and this is 7.2. So this is a very, very significant for Haiti. Uh, one of the strongest earthquakes in a wildness in this country and now we have a tropical storm to bring in extremely significant flooding at basically three days later and sadly kind of what we saw with um was it elsa with the collapse of the casino in uh in the miami region they had to uh blow down the building because elsa was going to bring significant flooding and rain and it's obviously um with obviously a building that's basically falling apart, you don't want to have a flooding damage within the actual building, so they had to take down the building. And obviously, we don't really have the technology for that to do that in Haiti. So it's going to be a huge, it's just going to be extremely unfortunate for them because obviously, tropical storm conditions are possible for Western forces in the Dominican Republic and Haiti Monday and Monday night. So Haiti has till tomorrow to rescue as many people as possible because sadly, if there's people still under. The infrastructure under the rubble when this storm comes in sadly it's extremely unlikely they survive so this is extremely unfortunate for haiti this is the worst time for a tropical system to go over obviously they just got hit by fred they still have some very very moist soil so it really won't take much to actually flood the rare area and there's a risk for wind and rainfall impacts across the rest of the dominican republic haiti into the caicos islands and as well even watching out for the bahamas cuba and florida so maybe we'll get some uh, tropical storm winds. However, the forecast is very uncertain as we go further out because there's a lot of uh, just uh, inconsistency with the models. It's either going to go due west because it's rather weak and the trough really won't affect it much and the trade winds will take it due west or that it strengthens a good bit and it starts going slightly more northwest. And that's just basically why there's so much uncertainty right now. So here's a look here at the actual, uh, finally it's, daylight within this region here it's been daylight for a little bit a, a while though but you can kind of see it's not looking too shabby for uh grace you can kind of see we're seeing somewhat an s structure uh with a lot of that banding here you can see a lot of that banding so we're kind of seeing an x structure which is actually not too shabby it's decent seeing some decent convection and a uh, convection burst to the actual air that low pressure and that low pressure is basically just to the south there of puerto rico there you can kind of see that area of convection as well you're kind of seeing that's where we'll be seeing that low level circulation. And it's basically what the low pressure is. So you can kind of see it's further northward than at the malls, than what the malls were showing yesterday. And you're about to see the actual change in the track in a few minutes here. But expected to start going west northwest into portions of the eastern Dominican Republic, kind of similar to what Fred did. However, it may be there's a chance that it may go further northward, kind of more of a northwest turn and actually completely or not completely avoid, but actually skin 
uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti instead of actually going through the actual middle region. But again, I'm at convection there. Let's actually go to the actual uh, long wave IR so you guys can get a look at the actual convection burst. There you see that's where we're basically right here is where that low pressure is. It's actually get a different, a different color. It's kind of just right here to the north of that main main that main or that latest convection burst. But you see some banding as well kind of developing here within uh within Grace. There's really not much initiation going on there to the southwest of that low pressure. However, uh, we are seeing some good amount of initiation lately now with some banding, which is very very close to Puerto Rico and that general region. But overall, it's not looking it's not looking the greatest. It looks quite disorganized. However, it does have some decent structure when you actually look at the satellite. However, like the, the convection is quite disorganized and it's just not looking the best right now. So we're going to see progress wise what it looks like later today. The LLC, there is an LLC, but it looks rather disorganized and it's definitely not a closed low level circulation. We did see a few West releases. However, ASCAT data is actually not here. Actually, they, there is ASCAT data, but it's just. It's actually not really going over. Um, it hasn't gone over yet of actually Grace. There is as uh, ace guys that actually north of Grace, get Puerto Rico and that region there in the U.S. Virgin Islands, but there's actually not actual data on the wind barbs and the actual wind speed on ace cat here. So we're gonna really wait for recon. But at this point, there is an LLC, but we just don't know whether it's closed or not. And based on what it looks like now, I doubt it's a closed LLC. So let's now get a look here at the actual new update as of 8 a.m. And you can kind of see for those who watched my video yesterday, this is quite a big change. And some of those are shocked at this change, uh, this uh, new change in the forecast. However, I actually knew this would happen because I knew, obviously, we all knew the recon kind of went to the, I want to say the wrong area because obviously the low had relocated for the north south at the, at that day obviously early in the day however by the time they actually got there there was a new convection burst near guadalupe it's exactly where the actual the low circulation was and that's the long story but that's it why this cone has pushed further northward because the low they the relocated low they went in is no longer the actual low pressure and it's further northward so it's actually closer to puerto rico and it actually may skin or it may make landfall on the far southwestern tip of Puerto Rico and likely to go straight through portions that we've been It's kind of has pushed further northward. However, there's probably a chance it may or may not actually go slightly further north like this. That is a very good chance as well if it does get some good strength right now. However, it's most likely likely it does go through East Benola. However, look at that. It's no longer expected to go dead center through Cuba. For those who remember, it was expected to go like this, like dead center through Cuba. So it's actually a pretty big change, and actually that will actually change the forecast quite a bit. Because if it stays just kind of outside Cuba, although there could be some land interaction, it will be a lot less significant, and it most likely will not pull a Fred. Because obviously Fred laid in Cuba for over 24 hours straight, and it was barely moving. So that's exactly why Fred became post-tropical. But it's not likely it does this here, because obviously this storm, although it's slowing down right now, 60 miles an hour, 16 miles an hour, expected to continue slowing down it will start to speed up a little bit more as it actually after the landfall in haiti so very unfortunate that's very slow over haiti and then it starts speeding out of nowhere so haiti's going to definitely get some pretty significant flooding there and actually haiti's under a travel storm watch at the moment and we do still have warnings across portion of puerto rico and as well warnings for much of eastern dominican republic and as well as southern coast of the dominican republic um so expected to kind of do what fred was supposed to do and that skin cuba and then continue to go west, northwest, where it's definitely going to be a pretty big factor here across the Gulf of Mexico. We have a lot of deep ocean heat content. Uh, it does not look like we're going to be seeing much shear there, although there is still a, a tut right now. It's bringing in a lot of shear just to the north of Grace, but obviously since it's kind of being steered kind of west, northwest uh, at a rather quickly rate, it should get spared and not die if it, this thing went any if this thing went further northward like north of puerto rico this thing would definitely dissipate so this is kind of a very close call at the moment but the, the tut really won't hurt it much so we're going to see gradual development at the 50 miles an hour before espanola and then likely get 50 once again back into the actual gulf of mexico so i think this could definitely become a high-end tropical storm i'm not going to rule out the possibility of a hurricane for this because of how much uh, water than really have. It's gonna basically have water from basically maybe here to maybe it goes towards Louisiana and Texas. It has a ton of time and very deep ocean heat content, very warm SSTs. 
Uh, it looks like at this point, dry air should not be a problem like it is right now for Fred because Fred's really lopsided. We're going to get into the shear and moisture actually um, factors in, at the very end of the video. But right now, this thing looks pretty conducive. And it looks like it's going to obviously get a lot further away from the tut. And the trough will kind of push north in the, uh, the Gulf of Mexico right now with Fred. So some shear, vertical shear should definitely be limited. Let's get a look here at the actual 12Z tracks here. So they're kind of all over the place. We have one kind of taking it towards maybe uh, areas like uh, Cedar, um, like areas like Key Largo. So we have one, the UK, uh, the UK X2 kind of taking it over Jamaica into areas like Cancun. That's a pretty significant difference. I mean, that's basically maybe a 700 mile difference right there. And it's obviously a, a pretty big significant because it's either it kind of goes for Florida actually and bring some significant effects, and if it actually were to pull this, it would be doing an H wharf and actually rapidly intensify. But if it goes this way, that means it's going to stay rather weak, and it's going to get steered by the trade wind, and that's exactly why it's going to kind of go more due west than west-northwest. So that's kind of the tricky situation there. But I doubt it goes to west like that, due west like that. Um, obviously, that's kind of what the GFS and CMC were hinting to. However, I really don't think it's going to do that. I think this is more likely that it actually kind of goes more like, like, I don't want to say the, the name Laura, but it's going to kind of most likely do like a Laura, sim, a similar track to Laura. Because obviously Laura did go just south of Puerto Rico and it did go through Jamaica and Public and it basically did just kind of go through Cuba a little bit. So this is very similar to a Laura track. And I hate to bring up that name. Obviously it would not become Laura Strength. Obviously Laura was a Category 4. This will not be the category four. I know the GFS, and or I know that one twelve Z GFS yesterday was showing a very significant monster for Texas. The H wharf is going crazy on it, but this will not be a category four. There's a chance that it could get to category one status, especially if it goes for Texas, because obviously that means more water time, and obviously there's more factor than just water, but that's going to bring in a big factor to why it could very well become stronger. Obviously, a lot less land traction as well. Let's actually get into the actual assembly models here on weather bells. So this is actually a look here at the, I believe this is a look at the GFS uh, assemble here on Grace. So you can kind of see uh, they're kind of taking it towards Texas, but actually near like a like Hannah or a Hannah mainly up on Brownsville. That's kind of where the the uh, assemble model mean, kind of the average. However, you see a lot. Of models just north of the actual mean are taking kind of uh, what we see right now, kind of Española north of Cuba, and then at that point probably ending up in the Gulf of Mexico and posing a threat for Texas and Louisiana. And then we have a few as well kind of going straight south. But there's actually a majority actually, there's actually a way more ensembles north of that mean than south of that mean. So it's going to be very interesting here that could bring in obviously more effects and actually a lot are showing actual landfall for southwest Puerto Rico. The European assembles on uh, Grace are kind of more reasonable. They're kind of going through Puerto Rico, Española, kind of skinning Cuba, and obviously bringing a big threat there for the the coast there. So we have actually miles all the way going from like West Palm Beach there to all the way to Belize, and that's a massive. That is a massive gap here. I mean, you think we have a lot more certainty, but legit, the European assembles go all the way from Belize to portions there of um, West Palm Beach, Florida, and Jupiter Beach. So it's basically, let's let's actually kind of compare. That's basically maybe like a 1,200, 1,300 mile difference. Because I know from my house to Miami is basically 700 miles. This is definitely more than 700 miles. This is basically maybe 1,300 mile difference. And it's obviously a lot of a difference here. Even 100 miles is a pretty big difference for tracks here. But 1,300, that is quite a, uh, that's quite a lot of uncertainty if you ask me. I'm not a professional with numbers, but that's pretty uncertain if you ask me there. CMC kind of as well taking it very similar to GFS. So the obviously CMC zero in 12Z. So obviously we're gonna get a look at their 12Z very soon here. The zero Z is kind of similar to the GFS zero Z. So they're kind of taking it kind of more towards the Gulf of Mexico there. All right, not just not just Gulf of Mexico, but Bay of Campeche. And I obviously did not see that at all. Obviously I could very well see it kind of start going west northwest. And it's actually going west northwest at the moment. It's not even going to west anymore really. Um, if you look at satellite, if you look at convection, look at the low pressure itself there, this is actually going west-northwest. And the overall forecast was a ton of the overall ensembles. So that's, that's Fred. Here's Grace. Just like how, how widespread it is. 
just a casual all the way from Florida to not only Belize, but portion of the northern Honduras. I mean, that is a massive difference. I mean, look at this difference here. Uh, you see the majority kind of taking it towards Cuba there. That's obviously good. But by the, by the time it actually goes towards Cuba, that's where things go all, all over the place. Then you have there, then you have there, then you have there. So even though we kind of have an idea it's going to go towards Cuba and not south near Jamaica, it's still a lot of uncertainty what to go to the Gulf of Mexico. And that's obviously something that's uh, quite a big concern when we see some uncertainty. Here's a look at the actual travel from Grace intensity guidance here from 12Z. And obviously, you, they kind of want to have it stay within 40 knots or 45 miles an hour, maybe 50 miles an hour before landfall and kind of some land interaction. But not, not going to weaken much, maybe to 45. And then you see as it goes into the Gulf of Mexico, a big increase there in models. Now, a good, a good amount actually getting towards Category 1. So like I said, I would not want the possibility for a Category 1 in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's a look here at actually Tropical Storm Fred, or obviously this is not, at least in, I believe this has obviously been a storm here. Uh, at least it was, there was a tweet uh, that it was back to a uh, tropical storm. Um, but here's a look at, the act at, at Fred here. Um, so you can kind of see there's a low pressure right here, basically within that area of convection. It's actually very lopsided. Actually, it's most likely more over here. You can kind of see a lot of the vorticity kind of coming in right here. So it's actually, this is where the low pressure is. And it's very, very lopsided. Obviously, you kind of see a lot of that convection initiation. It's basically like a bean. It's basically like the shape of a bean. It's extremely lopsided. And there is some dry air actually kind of coming, making its way in. You can kind of see some dry air kind of making its way in here. As it goes kind of clockwise, we're seeing a lot of that dry air being pushed into the actual center right here. So the center is right here. Uh, obviously, uh, west. It's obviously west of all that convection. And all the initiations is east of the uh, low pressure. That, that, that's why in the, the, uh, in the actual discussion you saw that we're missing some flooding and rain all the way up basically from where we are now, Florida, to basically going all the way up to the Big Bend and a portion of the Pensacola region. So uh, a lot of that storms are kind of right here. It's not the greatest looking. It's quite lopsided. There is a discussion that it could very well be a talk that it's subtropical at this point. Uh, I mean, it does look pretty, it does look pretty disorganized, though. There is an LLC here. Uh, wait, oops, I actually forgot where I was going. There we go. We're looking at IR. So basically, there is a discussion that it could very well possibly just become subtropical, not tropical again. Um, but it's obviously the national extent that it reformed in or it formed into a tropical storm again. It's not subtropical, so. But I think there's going to be some pretty uh, nasty structure as in not looking the greatest as it continues to move northward. There's going to be some more dense dry air. You can kind of see the dry air kind of making its way in here. There's a low pressure kind of right there. We're seeing some good amount of, of, uh, of vorticity there. Uh, but overall, a lot, like I said, a lot of convection initiation is staying towards the east of the actual low pressure itself. So here's a look at 37, the 37 color basically kind of showing you where we're seeing a lot of that initiation, basically all that. So you want to see kind of, this help, this is actually kind of helped to, to show you where we actually have uh, the actual center right here. So there you see the low pressure basically right here. And like I said, a lot of that convection, a lot of that initiation is just to the east of the low pressure. We're actually seeing some good banding here, kind of stretching down there, south, uh, south central or to the south central of the actual low pressure but there's the actual low pressure right there you can kind of see some decent um, very very little convection kind of starting to make its way northward but it's going to really struggle as there's a lot of dry air and there's actually as well some decent amount of shear and that they're going to be that kind of that trough kind of moving northward as the low pressure kind of moves northward as well so the good thing is some vertical shear will start to decrease a little bit however there is a good amount of shear at the moment and that's well kind of going to really be a partly reason why for us such an ugly looking system here. So here's a look at the actual uh, Florida radar site, and obviously you can kind of see a lot of the initiation is just east. There's nothing west of the low pressure. So as it kind of heads for forces in the Panhandle, uh, it's going to be a really bigger threat for Tallahassee and Panama City, not really Mobile, and that's kind of what we're going to be really watching out for. Here's a look at the actual track though from uh, for Fred, obviously. So there you can kind of see it's actually expected to start moving due westward. And then it's going to start its little turn here. So it kind of has shifted east once again. So uh, the main landfall is going to be for Pensacola. And that's exactly why there is watches, travel storm watches, all the way from Pensacola to portions near Apalachicola and Mexico City Beach. So there's no 
Travel Summer Watch is actually to the west because obviously a lot of the initiation, the stronger winds and all that will just be east and actually specifically northeast of that low pressure. I mean, there's not really much Travel Summer winds really sustained for the southeastern quadrant. However, there is a good amount of convection burst going on there. So I think we can definitely have to watch out whether this Travel Summer winds field is expanding. So again, expected to be 50 miles an hour, I believe so is what they had, 50 miles an hour. And watching for a landfall there for Pensacola. If anything, I think there's going to be travel storm watches, or sorry, travel storm warnings here. Let me actually kind of cut the travel storm warning color. There's probably going to be travel storm warnings probably from like right here to here, if I'm being completely honest. And then the watches will most likely uh, stay the way they are. I do not see them extending really much because this wind field does not look like it's going to get really much better or larger. And then it's going to become a uh, travel depression over areas like Montgomery and, and obviously going to kind of go through Alabama. And I'm actually, I'm actually back in the cone, basically. I, I did not expect to be back in the cone. Because typically, obviously, when I'm, on the, when I'm on the cone again, or when I get taken out of the cone, I get further and further away from the cone. But in this case, since there was an eastern shift here, uh, I've been, uh, yeah, I'm basically right on the edge of the cone once again because this child with depression is likely to go over Chattanooga now. And actually, yesterday, it was expected to kind of go like, like this, kind of like up Nashville. And now it's kind of been an eastern shift here. So I'm basically back in the cone. And actually, the, the Weather Channel has me in a ton of rain for like three days straight. The actually, the uh, AVNI is actually the closest towards me, basically like an hour west of me. Uh, but I'm actually getting black again. But you can kind of see here's the overall uh, overall track here, the overall forecast based on all the ensembles. So it's basically, we kind of all agree, or all the ensemble models are kind of all agreeing on Florida again. None are actually getting towards Alabama, but there are a few getting it further eastward towards uh, actually Panama City Beach. And uh, Destin Beach as well. But overall, getting a better idea, it's going to very well stick only for Florida. No threats really for Alabama much. There's not going to be much dorms or anything really to worry about for Alabama. Travel storm front intensity guidance here, getting basically the majority are basically having this uh, possibly anywhere from 45 to 50 knots. So we're basically maybe watching out for anywhere from 50 to 60 miles an hour, maybe. Again, there is no 55, so it's going to be very tricky that we can't have a 55 medium. So it's either going to basically be around to 50 or it's going to be around to 60. And I think there's a better chance around to 50 than 60. However, since there is a uh, very deep ocean heat content, we can see whether it does anything crazy. But there's still dry air and there is still obviously some shear we have to watch out for. Let's, not, let's start getting into the actual atmospheric conditions though, and the overall conditions for both these storms. So right now, obviously, uh, we are looking at some pretty warm waters for Grace at the moment, basically near 20 nine degrees Celsius waters and obviously Fred is in a very good environment water wise. There is again the dryer and shear messing it up. They're really, really if the thing was not lopsided and there was not dry air and uh shear trying to get within the actual low pressure, I think this thing could definitely become a high end tropical storm. It, it, like, I mean it's moving pretty slow, eight miles an hour. So if this were any ordinary storm and not and it had better conditions, this thing could definitely become even a hurricane threat for the Gulf Coast. But obviously that's not the case this time. Things really warm waters are basically 30 to 35, 30.5 uh, degrees Celsius waters there uh, in the main region. So obviously it's really warm waters ahead of Fred. That's going to help get about the 50 miles an hour. And then obviously if we're kind of seeing this with Grace, it would be a big threat because it's going to have really warm waters for a while there, even with a few little interactions. So I think it's going to be very interesting the scenario. And ocean heat content is also a pretty big factor here. We're seeing a lot of ocean, very deep ocean heat content, specifically there for the Western Caribbean, but that's not really what we're watching out for storms at all right now. The main area of ocean heat content we're watching out for is going to be the Gulf of Mexico. We have a pretty large area of 150 plus meters down where we're seeing 80 degree, 80 degree Fahrenheit waters. So that's definitely showing that we are seeing some really thick and as well overall a lot of accumulation of some uh, heat content overall. Uh, energy being stored within the water. So if there were, if Grace were to move over that, obviously at a very slow pace with very good conditions, this thing could definitely become a very big threat for Louisiana and Texas strength wise overall. But that's why this is one reason why I think it could definitely do something very interesting in the Gulf of Mexico. Let's say it comes out and actually it comes in the Gulf of Mexico at 50 miles an hour. There's a very good chance it can get to 75 before a landfall. Although it's going to be a little bit move, more faster. It's going to start moving, obviously, a lot faster than Fred. But obviously, it's going to have a lot better condition than Fred. It's obviously going to still have those really warm water and deep ocean heat content. Fred's not going to consume a lot of that. It's actually going to stay east of a lot of the ocean heat content bubble. So Fred should not really eat much of any of that. 
Here's a look here at the actual uh, 60 GFS. Again, we kind of have the low pressure a lot further northward. So here's a look at where the um, GFS has kind of it going towards Puerto Rico. This 60. Let's actually go back to the, uh, I believe, was it the 0Z of yesterday? No, I think 0Z was a lot better than yesterday. Let's go back to the 18Z of yesterday. And let's see where they had it kind of going. So they obviously had it like, kind of very far south, kind of right here and going like that. So obviously there's a big northern shift here because of that whole like relocation, LLC, all that stuff there. So having kind of making landfall for Puerto Rico at 900 and uh, it says, does that say a, a 908 millibars? Uh, no, that, that says 8 millibars. So apparently guys, it's making landfall in Puerto Rico at 8 millibars. Obviously it's 1,008, but then 1,009 and then going into the Dominican Republic there. Uh, but the year or the GFS still wanted to have this kind of go towards the Bay of Campeche and basically with that that's basically because they have it extremely extremely weak basically like only the like depression really so it's gonna get kind of affected by the trade winds. Um, the CMC that's actually I forgot to I forgot I completely forgot about Fred I forgot to talk about Fred. Uh, GFS actually doing something very interesting here they're obviously having Fred being a lot stronger as well a lot lower pressure originally they were only like showing a thousand seven a thousand nine. But now they want to have a thousand one millibars and actually a good amount of close isobars indicating some decent strong winds there. And making landfall a thousand one millibars near Destin Beach. And actually kind of has a low pressure kind of going into West Georgia and, and actually deep into West Georgia. So I think there could definitely be a chance for more of an eastern shift here continuing as the storms uh, expected to start going. Obviously, uh, obviously uh, west northwest and then the northwest turn, uh, northeast turn, sorry, a lot sooner there. But overall, it's low pressure is most likely going to start doing more of an eastern shift here. Let's now look at the CMC uh, 0Z, 12Z should come out rather soon. They also want to have, uh, actually for once GFS is stronger than CMC for Fred, only 1,005 millibars there. But same location, uh, CMC 0Z obviously came out a while ago, so it's taking it way far south. So I think the 0Z CMC is just not really reliable at the moment. Let's kind of see what the European is showing here. European actually sent some really good vorticity signatures there for Fred, actually. Not bad at all. And European looks like they want to take that vorticity, actually, the actual uh, grace north of Haiti and taking it towards Louisiana. So I think European is very interesting there. That's actually 0Z. So the Icon 6Z. And let's go to MSOP. So they also kind of want to take it north of East Benola and north of kind of around Cuba. But they also don't want to just take it due west near Cancun. So I think a lot of these 0 and 0 060 model guidances are not the greatest reliable wise. Let's now look at the actual conditions though for um, for both these storms. Because obviously, like I did say, a lot of the initiation of moisture is kind of just to the east there. It's why it's so lopsided. There is some dry air there, kind of getting a low pressure. Good moisture bubble there for Grace. As we continue on with. Um, Continue with Fred, it's gonna start getting a bit more of a moisture bubble. However, a lot of that dry air will start now going just not only west but to the east of the low pressure itself. So that's gonna definitely be something to watch out for. However, it should get a decent moisture bubble and dry air shouldn't really kill it or anything like that. And obviously, GF is taking that moisture bubble far south compared to what they were originally showing there. So they're kind of showing a lot of that moisture taking it just towards the Gulf of Mexico there. Let's now look at the H wharf though. H wharf here, this is 60. And they want to have it kind of make landfall for southwestern Puerto Rico at a thousand millibars. And what this is at like a thousand ten right now. So it's not the most reasonable. And they actually want to completely have it avoid Dominican Republic because they have it very they have it getting so strong that the trough kind of becomes more of a uh, steering factor and it starts going a little bit more northwestern because how strong it gets. And that's exactly why it's going to go to the Bahamas there as probably a low end category one, a high end tropical storm. And they're making landfall and rapidly intensifying in the rapid intensification bubble there between the Bahamas and Florida is the best area to rapidly intensify. And they have it getting up to 973 lamp, uh, millibars for a Miami landfall. So they actually originally were shutting the H4 kind of down here, but now they want it all the way up here because they have it so strong. They head directly from Miami. So if you're in Miami, do not freak out because of this run. Trust me, I, I have family in Miami. I would tell them if they were serious. This is definitely not going to happen at all. But that is 973 millibars. Let's actually see the actual winds, though. The wind is going to be something like I don't want to see at all. Uh, it's, Wait, that's actually not bad. Only 69 knots. But they have it to 79, 79 knots there. So basically, 
just under 90 miles an hour. So they basically have it uh, up to that pressure is really, really low considering it's only category one winds. That's extremely low, but 850 millibar is definitely 850 millibars is me crazy. They have a thousand nine millibar or I'm sorry, 109 knots. Uh, 109 knots, which is basically what 125 miles an hour, which is basically a major. So 850 millibars category three, but 10 minute, 10 meters is looking at only a category one win. But this is obviously not going to verify and see what they have. And they have it getting up to 966 millibars in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. They're up to 113 knots. Let's see 10 meter. And they have it up to around 89 knots there. So either way, pretty strong storm. Let's actually look at the actual uh, satellite imagery here, what they have for this. And they have it like, looking like a monster there. That's obviously not going to happen. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys later.